and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I am Dr. Bhumika. Let's look at today's top medical news. Can lifestyle changes really prevent diabetes? In a new study published in the Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology, researchers report that lifestyle modifications remain more effective than medication in preventing the onset of type 2 diabetes in at-risk individuals. The findings come from the Diabetes Prevention Program, a large randomized trial launched in 1996 to compare the effects of the drug metformin with those of an intensive lifestyle intervention, including healthy diet and regular exercise. The trial enrolled 3234 pre-diabetic adults at 30 institutions across 22 US states. Researchers found that while both strategies significantly reduced the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, the lifestyle intervention showed superior long-term results. The latest follow-up called the Diabetes Prevention Program Outcome Study involved researchers like Walla Braj Shah, Professor Emeritus at the University of New Mexico School of Medicine. According to Shah, the data suggests that those people who didn't get diabetes also didn't get diabetes after 22 years. How COVID-19 pandemic increased mental health issues, malaria and heart disease. Disruptions in healthcare services during the COVID-19 pandemic led to significant increases in illness and death from non-COVID causes such as mental health conditions, malaria in young children and cardiovascular disease in older adults according to a new study published in the BMJ. During the pandemic, many healthcare systems were strained or shut down, interrupting routine care and management for chronic and infectious diseases. To better understand the global fallout, researchers in China analyzed data from the Global Burden of Disease Study 2021. They simulated the burden of 174 conditions across 204 countries and territories for the years 2020 and 2021, focusing on measures such as incidence, prevalence, mortality and disability adjusted life years that is dialysis. Mental health disorders saw one of the sharpest increases. New cases of depressive disorders rose by 23% in 5 to 14 year olds, the study found. Dialysis rates for depressive and anxiety disorders increased by 12 and 14% respectively, with particularly high rates among females. Similarly, age standardized incidence and prevalence rates for depressive disorders rose by 14% and 10%, while anxiety disorders saw a 15% rise. Early infections and obesity in boys may reduce key male hormone. Early childhood obesity and common infections like chickenpox may increase the risk of chronic diseases later in life, according to new research published in the journal Andrology. Scientists from the University of Nottingham School of Biosciences have found that such early life health factors are linked to reduced levels of the testis hormone biomarker insulin-like peptide 3, INSL3, in men by their mid-20s, a change that could forecast future health complications. The study builds on previous work demonstrating that INSL3 is a powerful predictor of long-term male health. INSL3 levels are stable in adulthood and reflect the testes' ability to produce testosterone, a hormone vital not only for reproductive function but also for maintaining general health including bone strength, cardiovascular function and metabolic health. In the new study, researchers examined data from the children of the 90s, a large UK birth cohort initiated by the University of Bristol. The team measured INSL3 levels in 24-year-old men and matched them against a wide array of clinical and lifestyle data collected since birth. Could your saliva predict diabetes risk? A new Cornell University study brings additional clarity to the relationship between type 2 diabetes and genes that express a salivary enzyme that breaks down starch. It was previously known that people with more copies of the genes that express salivary amylase called AMY1 produce more salivary amylase enzyme. The new paper published in PLOS One supports the idea that having more copies of the AMY1 gene may be protective against type 2 diabetes, though additional long-term studies are needed to prove the theory. If researchers do eventually prove a clear association between AMY1 copy, number and diabetes, it could lead to genetically testing people at birth to predict their susceptibility. Researchers collected measurements from study participants of amylase activity very early in the morning after fasting and in the evening. They found that morning readings were much lower than they were in the evening. Thank you for watching Medical Dialogues. Stay tuned for more such updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.